On day one, I spawned in as Iron Man. And look, I'm not a baby. I'm all powered up. I flew around firing lasers. This was really cool. These zombies have met their match. Time to say goodbye. I blasted the zombies out of the way. They were no match for the might of Iron Man. Once they were all destroyed, I was floating over the forest, scanning the area. Suddenly, something hit me out of nowhere. What was that? I didn't see who it was, but I heard a voice. Say goodbye to your power. I had hit the ground, but managed to survive. But look, now I only have five hearts. I had to hurry and leave the area, though. Whoever that was could come back. Later, as I was escaping through the forest, a group of zombies came running up to me. I know how to handle these guys, but that was when I had my suit and powers. I didn't stand a chance now. I had no choice but to run away. Oh, I can't believe someone caught me off guard. They better watch out, because I'll stop at nothing to get my power back. But that was another day, so I settled in for the night. On day two, I woke up all alone, still feeling weak without my powers. I had to figure out who was out to get me. I've got quite the mission ahead of me. I'm going to be building and making all kinds of really cool things. But before I can do that, I need to start with the basics. I went outside and got right to work, punching trees. With the wood I had collected, I then made a crafting table. Using the crafting table and my leftover wood, I made myself some wooden tools, including a sword. Time to find some lunch. I went outside and soon came across a rabbit. That's going to have to do for now. I chased it down and got its meat. I might be trapped in the wilderness with no powers, but that doesn't mean I have to eat raw meat. As I took a look around, I soon came across a village. In the middle of the village was a campfire. Let's get cooking. I laid down my rabbit meat and let it sizzle. Soon, I had some cooked meat. I took a bite and was feeling much better. Suddenly, I realized what kind of village it was. It was a pillager village. Uh-oh. Oh, time to run. Pillagers chased me, but I managed to get away without losing my life. Later that evening, I took the simple supplies I had collected to start making myself a house to stay in. If those pillagers found me, at least I would have some walls to protect me. Soon, the hut was complete, and I settled in for the night. On day three, I awoke to a knock on the door. Who could that be? I opened the door and saw it was Captain America. Or, well, I guess it was just Steve Rogers. He wasn't looking so good. Steve, what's wrong? You're not looking like your normal fit self. I was worried something had happened to you. I see now I was right. Your friend, Iron Monger, is to blame for this. I was minding my own business when he suddenly came out of nowhere. I don't know how he did it, but he managed to take away all of my powers. We might not be strong enough to help him right now, but we need to hurry and warn the others he's coming for him. That's a good point. Let's stick together while we figure this out. Steve agreed, and so we figured it would be good to start building a proper base. We did some scouting around and soon found a nice cliffside that would work perfect. I didn't have my powers, but I could still get shipments of stuff sent to me. After a bit, an express delivery with all the supplies we'd need showed up, and we got to work. Building a house on a cliff like this reminded me of my mansion in Malibu. It wasn't going to be quite like that, but I was hoping to eventually make something just as impressive. Soon, the beginning of our base was complete. Thanks for your help, Pete. We'll let you know if anything else comes up. On days four to five, Steve came over to talk. He wanted to know if I knew where any other superheroes were. Sorry, buddy, I don't. I really wish I did, though. Well, you're a pretty smart guy, right? Is there something you could invent? I thought it was a good question, but nothing came to mind. I stared at my empty crafting table when suddenly I had an idea. Oh, wait, maybe that could work. I headed out to the caves to gather the materials I would need. If I could just get everything I would need, this special item would be the perfect solution to our problem. By the time I had made it into the deepest part of the cave, I had already managed to make myself some iron gear. It was about to come in handy as I was suddenly attacked by a bunch of magma cubes. All right, box heads, you're just what I was looking for. I swung my sword and managed to take a few of them out. As they disappeared, they dropped some charged coal. Once the threat was taken care of, I also found some nearby palladium, which I happily mined up. All right, that's everything I'm going to need. Let's make this special item. I soon arrived back at the house and got right to it, smelting down the palladium into ingots. I also needed a compass, which Steve gave to me. At long last, the final pieces were starting to come together. I went to the crafting table and used the palladium, charged coal, and compass to make my special item, a superhero radar. Sure hope this works. Steve and I headed into another room, and I set the radar down in the center. I placed a lever on the wall and flipped it. The radar started to make a sound, and a purple line came out of it. That line is pointing us to a nearby superhero. Now we can help them. On day six to eight, I checked the radar again to get a clear direction of where to go. I told Steve to hang back at the base and keep an eye on the radar, just in case anyone else popped up on it. Let's go see who it's gonna be. I left the base and ran off in the direction the radar had indicated. Hopefully I could get to them in time. After a bit of traveling, I soon reached a village, but it looks like the place was abandoned. Hello, is there anyone here? Thought it was you stomping around. Black Widow had come out of nowhere. Natasha, I can't believe I found you. There's no time to explain, but I need you to come with me. Listen, I don't trust anyone that much, even you. You're gonna have to give me some kind of explanation. Okay, uh, Steve is back at my base, and you see neither of us have our powers anymore, so we've gotta hurry to get out of here, or the same will happen to you. Don't have your powers? Who or what did that to you? Iron Monger! It was an answer to her question, but also an exclamation. He had popped up out of nowhere. Black Widow had sprung into action, trying to fight him off. I was still too weak, though, and had to run away. Hang in there, Natasha. They continued to fight, but it was no use. Iron Monger was too quick and managed to hit her with a special gun. He had taken away all of her special abilities. Huh. 
I don't know what you two are up to, but knock it off. Go live normal lives like the ordinary people you are. Before he could do us any more harm, we ran away. I couldn't believe he was able to do it again. On days 9 to 10, Black Widow and I arrived back at the base. We met up with Steve. Natasha, it's good to see you. Wait, did something happen? It was Iron Monger. I had gotten there in time, but he showed up and was able to steal her power. Oh no, did you see where he went? No, we had to get out of there. I hate this feeling. I've never felt so useless. It's okay. Keep your head on straight. I need some time to clear my head. I decided to get to work, building Natasha her own place to stay at the base. It was good to have a project to keep my mind busy. I couldn't believe I was beaten by my own friend. Soon, Natasha's room was complete. On days 11 to 12, I went to check the machine and saw there was a new signal, but this time it was different. What is it? What does it mean? Not 100% sure. It's a new invention that even I don't understand completely. Well, if it's pointing to a friendly, it's worth a shot trying to save him. Yeah, I'm not so sure, Cap. What good are we as rescuers if we can't really rescue someone? Iron Monger is just going to show up again. You don't know that. And come on, you know there's more to this than just being the strongest. Huh. That's certainly something coming from you. I'll see what I can find. I left the base and headed in the direction the radar was pointing. As I looked around, I felt like I wasn't seeing anything. That's when I realized I was back at the place I had crashed on day one. Suddenly, I noticed something nearby on the ground. I picked it up. Jarvis, is that you? What are you doing out here, buddy? Hello, sir. I'm delighted to see you have found me. So am I. How are you? I am here, but I am damaged. I am sorry for the loss you have suffered. So am I, buddy. But hey, do you think you can help? You've got all that information for my suit stored in your memory, don't you? I do. Or rather, I believe I do. My memory banks have been damaged, but it seems plausible they can be recovered. We will need to find the correct materials in order to recover it. Sure, sure, we can do that. I built a suit once. I can surely do it again. What's on that materials list of yours? Jarvis gave me the list of what I needed, and I headed off right away. On days 13 to 15, I arrived at some caves and headed on in to gather up the materials Jarvis had mentioned. First, I gathered up a bunch of iron, which was one of the main things I would need. Then I found some titanium, which was also going to come in handy. All right, that should be everything I need from here. I then left the cave and found myself in a herd of cows. I took some of the cows out in order to get some leather. That was all the ingredients I was going to need. Time to get back to the base. On days 16 to 19, I made it back to the base and went into my garage. It was crafting time. I put the iron in the furnace and started smelting iron ingots. Then it was titanium's turn, which started smelting into titanium ingots. While the ores were smelting, I then opened a nearby chest and grabbed some glass I had. Then at the crafting table, I added the glass to some iron and palladium to make myself a new arc reactor. At last, power! With my new palladium arc reactor, I could start to put together a new suit. I grabbed the ingots I needed out of the furnace, then used iron, titanium, leather, and the arc reactor to make myself a chest plate. Oh yeah, here we go. With the chest plate finished, I then used the rest of my materials and made the leggings, boots, and of course, the helmet. This isn't the best suit I've ever made. In fact, it's just as good as the first one I built in a cave in the desert, but it'll be better than having nothing. Hey, what have we got here? Steve and Natasha had walked into the garage. You built a new suit. It's gonna be so good good for you. How did you pull it off? It was with the help of Jarvis. I found him at the crash site. His memory is damaged, but he remembered enough to help me build the suit. You think that's a good idea? Do you think it's not? No, no, it's great. It's just that you said Jarvis was damaged. I'd hate to see something go wrong. I assured him that Jarvis was working well enough to help me make the suits again without putting any of us in danger. That seemed like an excuse, though. Steve was probably just jealous I was getting my powers back, and he wasn't. Before I could say anything else, though, Natasha mentioned that she and Steve had gotten more food and stored it in the kitchen. All that crafting had made me hungry. I went over there to cook up some steak. This is going to be much better than Wild Rabbit, that's for sure. When the steak was ready, I scarfed it down. Delicious! I then went and started to make some more upgrades to the base. I was a man of luxury, so I decided the house needed a swimming pool. I picked a good spot and got the thing installed. All this building has given me an idea for one more big project. I headed out and got to work building a statue. These were dark times, and there was always one thing that could be a light in the darkness. Let me know what you think I'm building. Soon, the first part was complete. On days 20 to 22, I heard a notification go off on the radar, telling me another superhero had been found. I went and told Steve and Natasha the good news. They both wanted to come with to find who it was, but I told them it might be good for just me to go, given that I was the only one who had regained any of my power. As I put my suit on, I saw my health increase to 8 hearts. I was also stronger and had a flamethrower attack. It was time to help our fellow superhero. As I got closer to the place the radar was pointing me to, I saw a large tower in the middle of the forest. I knew just who I'd find inside. As I reached the top, I could see Doctor Strange was there. Steven, be on your guard. Iron Monger is running around stealing everyone's power. What? He immediately got ready to fight. It was just in time, too, as Iron Monger came flying over, firing down on us. Oh, the good doctor. I think you've got just what I'm looking for. Doctor Strange was ready, though, and he started to put up a good fight. Iron Monger was going to have a much harder fight this time. I may have spoke too soon, though, as Iron Monger managed to land a hard hit, knocking out Doctor Strange. Iron Monger lifted his weapon 
weapon and started draining Doctor Strange's power. I had to do something. Oh, no, you don't. Even though I wasn't super strong, I charged in and managed to stop Iron Monger from taking all the power. Problem was, he was now focused on me. Doctor Strange was back in the fight, though, and together we put up a good fight. In the end, we managed to hurt Iron Monger enough that he backed down. This isn't the last you've seen of me. He flew off. Steven, are you okay? I still have some of my powers, but I'm definitely weaker than before. I need to go rest. Doctor Strange opened a portal and walked through it. Huh, well, that was a quick exit, but at least we could stop him from losing everything. I better get back to the base and see who else we can help. On days 23 to 26, I was on my way back to the base when Jarvis piped up with some helpful information. Sir, my sensors are indicating a lot of silver nearby. I think that could help. Jarvis then told me what direction to go, and I headed there right away. As I arrived at the location he was sending me to, I didn't see anything. Are you sure this is the right place? There doesn't seem to be anything here. The silver may be beneath something, but I am 99% sure it is here. Well, guess I better start breaking blocks. I started breaking things as I looked around and soon saw an entrance to a dungeon. What is this all about? As I went deeper into the dungeon, I ran into a bunch of piglins. You piggies better watch out. That's when I noticed that they had all kinds of material stored down here. I hope you guys don't mind if I use some of this stuff. As I fought my way through the gang of piglins, I noticed that they dropped silver ingots. There, sir. The silver I was detecting. I happily picked the silver up and continued to fight the piglins. There were hoglins around as well, and they were a tough challenge. But I was up for the fight and soon made it to the dungeon's boss. A piglin brute with armor. You look strong, but I'm stronger. It turned out I was right. The piglin brute was really strong after all. He knocked me back, but I stayed in the fight. He wasn't going to get the better of me. After a long fight, I finally took him out. Huh, he didn't drop anything. But look, a chest. I went over to the chest, which was filled with silver. This should be more than enough. I hurried back out of the cave. On days 27 to 31, I arrived back at my base. I met back up with the team to tell them the good news. Guys, I was able to find Doctor Strange, and together we were able to fight off Iron Monger. Doctor Strange was weakened, but he was able to keep his powers. Everyone was really excited to hear the good news and couldn't believe Iron Monger had shown up again. Everyone, that is, except Steve. He kept his powers, huh? Well, uh, good for him, I guess. I didn't know why Steve wasn't excited like everyone else. He really must be jealous someone else got to keep their powers. I left the room and went to work on a new set of armor. With all the new silver I'd collected, I was going to be able to build an even better suit. I took my time making each set, and soon I had a full set of Iron Man Mark II armor. Oh yeah, now this is what I'm talking about. With my new suit on, I noticed I had more health than before. I still couldn't fly yet, but I could jump a little higher and felt stronger too. I showed it off to the gang and everyone was really impressed. If I kept finding more materials, I would be back to full strength in no time. I had to find more materials. On days 32 to 35, I decided to see what else Jarvis could find for me. I'm thinking of adding some more weapons to the suit. What do you think it can handle? Scan show it is not strong enough to handle your repulsor cannon, but there is something else that might work. We'll have to travel far away, but I believe it will be worth it. Show me the way. Jarvis explained the way to go, and eventually we made it to an entirely new biome. All right, Jarvis, what direction? Down, sir. It looked like it was time to dig. I think I knew what he had in mind. I kept digging and digging and soon made it into a magma chamber. Let me guess, we need some lava. No, sir. We're searching for a very specific mob. It should be here. I started to explore. Could you tell me what I'm looking for? Just then, I almost ran into a monster. It was a mutant blaze. Yikes, thanks for the warning. Sorry, sir, but my sensors aren't quite as sharp down here. The mutant blaze's fire attacks were strong, but my new armor was doing its job. I was taking much less damage than I normally would have. I'm gonna put you out, Firehead. I kept on swinging and at long last defeated the Blaze. As he disappeared, I saw he had dropped a Blaze Core. The Blaze Core, that is just what we need, sir. On days 36 to 39, I made it out of the hole and headed back towards the base. As I arrived back at the base, I went to the crafting area and got right to work on the new suit attachment. Using the Blaze Core, I was able to make myself a flamethrower. Oh yeah, I'm starting to heat up now. I called the others over and showed them my new toy. Whoa, that new flamethrower is so hot right now. Natasha was really excited about it, but Steve, less so. No surprise there, he was just jealous. On days 40 to 43, I heard the power detector going off again. It must have found another superhero. Maybe with my new gear, I can even defeat Iron Monger this time. I let the others know that I would head out by myself again. Until they could get their powers, it just didn't make sense to put them in harm's way. I would handle everything. I set off in search of the superhero, and soon found myself in a thick forest. Hello, is there anyone around here? I kept shouting and looking around, but couldn't find anyone. All I saw were a bunch of bats flying around. Suddenly, they attacked me. What the, get away from me. Using my new attacks, I managed to fight off the bats, but then I was attacked by some wolves. This forest is crazy. What's going on around here? The wolves snapped their teeth and swung their claws, but I was able to keep them away and knock them out. 
I still don't see anyone, but it's starting to get late. I better build a shelter for the night. I soon found a nice clearing and got right to work building a shelter. After a bit, my camp was set up. Time to get some sleep. I'll keep looking in the morning. On days 44 to 49, I woke up in the middle of the night to a rumbling sound. What was that? I ran outside and saw there was a huge castle that had appeared out of nowhere. Well, nothing else to do but take a look. I ran into the castle and was suddenly attacked by a whole bunch of spooky mobs. There were bats and all kinds of skeleton creatures. I had to fight for my life. Back off, you undead creatures. You'll never take me alive. I kept fighting my way through the castle until finally I saw something different than the mobs. It was Blade. Blade, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I've tracked a vampire to this castle and I'm so close to finally beating him. I've come to warn you. Iron Monger is going around stealing power from superheroes. You've got to get out of here. Thanks for the warning, but I've come too far to quit. I don't see Iron Monger anywhere, so I think I have time to finish my mission. Well, let me help. Together we can get it done even faster. We soon noticed a coffin and walked up to it to take a look. We opened it, but it was a trap. Oh no, what is this? I can't move. Me either. Jarvis, clear this gas out of my suit. Jarvis got right to work, but he wasn't quick enough. Iron Monger had shown up. Huh, stay still. This won't hurt at all. Iron Monger used a special item and was able to take away Blade's powers. Jarvis had just cleared the gas from my suit, though, and I was ready to fight. I thought I told you to keep out of this. Iron Monger didn't stick around to fight me, but instead released the vampire before flying away. Without his powers, Blade was in for a real fight. Come on, Blade, I'll help you. Blade and I got to work swinging at the vampire. Even without his powers, Blade was a good fighter, getting lots of hits in. He wasn't good enough, though, and the vampire was able to really hurt him. You'll pay for that. I started attacking him even more than before and could tell I was starting to win. When he was at his weakest, Blade jumped forward and knocked him out with a stake for good. Thanks for your help. I couldn't have done this without you. Here, take this stake. You never know when it could come in handy. Thanks. I'll be sure to keep it close. I'm sorry about your powers. How about you come back to my base with me and we can figure this out? That sounds like just what I need right now. On days 50 to 53, Blade and I returned to the base. Then we met up with Natasha and told her what had happened. I'm sorry to hear it didn't work out this time. It sounds like he's getting smarter. I'm sorry too. But hey, where's Steve? Huh? Oh, he said he had some errands to run and left. He didn't tell me what those errands were. Huh, that's odd. Just then, Steve came back to the base. Sorry about that. I was just collecting some more materials to upgrade the base. I thought you could use some new materials for our new guest. That was a fair point. He was right, too. Blade needed a place to stay. Using some of the materials Steve had gathered, I was able to put together a room for Blade. Steve had also mentioned wanting a training room, so I got to work on that. Just because they had lost their powers didn't mean they couldn't stay in shape. Soon, everything was complete. On days 54 to 57, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. I decided I needed to talk to Natasha in private. Hey, I wanted to ask, has Steve been acting strange to you? Now that you mention it, he has. I haven't seen him do anything strange specifically, but he doesn't seem like he's been his normal self. I usually try and let people just do their own thing. You see, the thing is, Iron Monger always seems to show up right around the same time I do. I'm not saying Steve is somehow tipping him off, but I want to be sure he's not involved. Say no more. The next time you guys go, I'll keep an eye on him. That would be strange, but we'll feel better if we can rule it out. Thanks, Nat. I appreciate it. I then reached out to Jarvis to help with the next stage of rigging up the superpower detector. If Steve was really tricking us, I needed to get the super detector to trick him. Jarvis said he knew what I needed to get, but there were some special items I needed to collect first. Let's get exploring. On days 58 to 62, Jarvis led me to a cave that was filled with spiders. I was pretty strong at this point, and these spiders were no match for me. I easily knocked them out of the way. Aha! There's the gold ore you wanted me to get. I quickly mined up all the gold I needed, then hurried back to the base. There, I crafted some special wiring out of gold and took it to the superpower detector. After I attached the new wiring, the detector started to go off. Everyone came running into the room. The detector found another super. Hang tight, guys. I'll go get them and help them out. Everyone agreed, and as I went to leave, I gave Natasha a nod to let her know the plan was on. She nodded back. I soon reached a mountaintop where the detector was pointing me to. Of course, no one was here, but I needed to put on a good show. Oh, hey, Thor. I can't believe you're here. Just then, Iron Monger popped out. Uh -huh. Huh? I was ready for him and gave him a good hit. What the? There's no Thor here. I can't believe I've been betrayed and tricked like this. What do you mean betrayed? How did you know I would be here? I've said too much. Iron Monger flew away. Something was definitely going on. I hurried back to the base. As I arrived, I could see Natasha was waiting for me. You're not going to believe this. What happened? After you left, I followed Steve just like you asked. Once he had gotten far enough away from the base, I saw him pull out a communication device. I got close enough to hear who he was talking to. It was Iron Monger. You're right. I can't believe this. We've got to confront him right away. On day 63 to 66, I headed into the base to find Steve. I soon found him. Hey, you weren't gone for very long. Did you find anyone? There was no one there, but... You probably already knew that. What do you mean? How could I have known that? Because you've been in contact with your friend, Iron Monger. 
Give it up, Steve. We know. You don't know anything. Just then, Steve started to transform. Suddenly, Steve was gone, and Mandarin was standing there. Mandarin, so it's been you all along. I should have known it was someone evil trying to trick us. Well, you just aren't very smart, are you? You've been leading us to superheroes this entire time. What do you want with us? I've been absorbing all of the powers. Soon, you'll be unable to stop me. I was hoping I could wait for you to build another super suit so I could steal its powers too. But no matter, you'd never stop me. I leapt forward to attack him, but he was right. He was really strong. He knocked me out of the way and was able to escape. He wasn't fully powered up yet, but if he was this strong already, we were going to be in real trouble. On day 67 to 70, I went to talk to Natasha and Blade. I couldn't believe I had been tricked. I apologized to them for leading Mandarin right to them. Don't worry about it. You were trying your best. Now that we know who we're really up against, we have a better chance of stopping him. Thanks, Nat. I appreciate the support. And speaking of support, I appreciate all of you watching too. After this video, search for more Zozo. Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've managed to repair my memory banks and unlocked a new design for another part of the suit. Oh, that's great news. What do we need to build it? It looks like we'll be needing some diamonds, but I'm not detecting any on my scanner. You need diamonds? I haven't seen any underground, but while I was tracking the vampire, I stayed in a village full of them. I'll tell you where to go. Blade explained where the village was, and I set off to find it. I soon arrived and saw that Blade wasn't lying. There were diamonds everywhere here. The villagers had all kinds of diamond tools and armor. Hey there, nice armor. Do you guys have any extra diamonds you could spare? I might have some, but I can't just give you them for free. That's understandable. How much do they cost? You know, we've had quite a bit of a problem here, and if you can solve that problem, I'll give you everything we can spare. Sounds like it must be a pretty big problem then. Yeah, there's a monster that has started living in our diamond mine, and we haven't been able to go in there for weeks. Take care of that monster for us, and we'll give you our spare diamonds. <sighs> okay, I'll do it. Tell me where to go. On day 71 to 74, I arrived at the diamond mine, but the place looked abandoned. I guess the monster really cleared this place out. Better see what I can find. I went into the cave, but didn't see any diamonds. I didn't see anything, for that matter. The place was super dark. As I went deeper into the mine, I placed torches to help me see. The mine kept going deeper and deeper. I was starting to wonder if it would ever end. At long last, I reached what seemed to be the final room. There's nothing here. Maybe the monster left or something. Just then, I noticed that the torches I had placed along the wall were starting to go out. One by one, they broke, getting closer and closer to me. Suddenly, the vampire from before appeared. What? I thought we defeated you. The vampire smirked and then attacked. He was even stronger than before. And this time, he had some tricks up his sleeve too. He burst into a ball of smoke, summoning a group of bats. What in the world? This is crazy. The vampire had disappeared. I had to defeat these bats. I ran around, trying to cut down as many as I could. Suddenly, I felt a hit. The vampire had reappeared. Get out of here, Dracula. I still couldn't believe this guy was still around. But I guess it's true. Vampires can never really be defeated. That's when I remembered. The stake. The vampire was getting weak now, and it was time to finish him off. I grabbed my stake and hit him, finishing him off. He would be back eventually, but at least I could get my diamonds in the meantime. I hurried back into the village and met up with the villager. It's done. The monster is gone. Now let's see about those diamonds. Amazing. You saved us. Here, you can have everything we have to spare. The villager tossed out a single diamond. I gave him a look. I thought you said you were going to give me all the diamonds you have to spare. I did. We only have one diamond to spare. Jarvis piped up. That should be all we need, sir. Mm, thanks. Well, here. You guys might need this. I tossed him the stake and headed off, back to the base. On day 75 to 78, I arrived back at the base. It was time to make what Jarvis had remembered. As I went to the crafting table, Jarvis told me what I needed to do to craft a new repulsor. It wasn't my full suit, but at least it was a stronger weapon than before. Just then, Natasha came into the room. You You've got your repulsor up and running? That's great! Yeah! Problem is, I don't know where to go to find Iron Monger or Mandarin. Yeah, I was thinking about that. When I heard Steve, or I guess Mandarin, talking to Iron Monger, I thought I could hear some machines in the background. Blade came into the room. Machines? There's a factory not too far from here. Maybe he's hiding out in there. It's worth a shot. I'm not sure where else to look. They all agreed, and I decided that before I would leave, I would go ahead and finish the statue. It took a lot of hard work to get it done, but I soon had it all finished in no time. So what do you guys think? Did you guess what it was correctly? On day 79 to 84, I soon arrived at the factory Blade had told me about. I'm not sure if this is right, but we'll find out. As I got closer, I was suddenly attacked by a group of zombies. If there were zombies around here, there was a good chance Iron Monger or Mandarin were around too. I managed to fight through the wave, but avoided using my repulsor. In case Iron Monger was watching, I didn't want him to know I had it. Soon, all of the zombies were defeated. On days 85 to 89, I entered into the base. That's when I saw Iron Monger standing amongst a bunch of zombies trapped in cases of liquid. What are you doing? I knew you would show up here eventually. I'm doing what needs to be done. You superheroes think you can just do whatever you want. Zombies can be controlled, so I'm taking your powers and giving them to them. Then I will control all the powers on Earth. 
Oh, I see. You don't want to stop superpowers. You just want to be in charge of them yourself. I won't let you get away with this. Huh. You've been trying to stop me this entire time and have never beat me. Today, I will finish you for good. We'll see about that. Iron Monger flew up in the air as a door opened, letting zombies into the room. There were a ton of them. Uh-oh, I better take care of these first. I ran around the room, trying to take out as many zombies as I could. This was a tough fight with so many things going on at once. I had to defeat Iron Monger, though. My friends were going to need all of their powers back. Where is Mandarin hiding? You'll never find him, because you'll never leave here. Iron Monger and I were now fighting each other directly, and it was getting intense. He hadn't expected all of my upgrades, though, and I was really hurting him. How did you get so strong? I thought I took everything away from you. A suit isn't a brain, and that's what's going to defeat you. I fired my repulsor at him and took him out for good. As he disappeared, I saw he had dropped some unique parts, which I picked up. Sir, we can use these materials to remake your strongest suit. Yes, now we just need to find Mandarin and get everyone's powers back. Let's do this. On days 90 to 94, I made it back to the base. I ran right over to Natasha and Blade to tell them the good news. I was able to defeat Iron Monger. The bad news is that he was trying to inject zombies with your powers. That's horrible. It's a good thing you beat him, though. Speaking of, any way to get our powers back? Before I left, I saw he had some kind of machine that must be storing your powers. If you guys go there, you may be able to get them back. Right on. Thanks for all of your help. You've got it. Now I've got to get to work returning to my final form. I rushed over to the garage as the other set off for the factory. Using the materials Iron Monger had dropped, I got to work building my final Mark III version of my armor. After a lot of hard work, my armor was restored. Yes, it's going to feel so good to fly again. I ran up the stairs of the house and over to a balcony. Here we go. I jumped off and nothing happened. I landed in the water below. Jarvis, what's going on? Sorry, sir, but while your suit has been restored, the flying capabilities still need some repairs. Don't you think you could have told me that before I jumped off the cliff? My apologies, sir. It's okay. No harm done. Now, where do we need to go? On days 95 to 97, Jarvis instructed me that we would be heading to the nether, so I got to work building a nether portal. I hadn't been able to get a diamond pickaxe, so I had to get creative. By using lava and some water, I managed to fashion a nether portal together. It took a bit to get it all done, but soon, I had my own nether portal ready to go. Alright, Jarvis, show me the way. I stepped into the portal and soon found myself in the nether. This place always gives me the creeps. Let's make this quick. There was some quartz nearby, so I quickly ran over to it and mined it up. Luckily, that was all I needed, so with my pockets full, I jumped back into the portal. Back in the garage, I got right to work, crafting the flight module. It didn't take too long, and soon, it was all complete. I walked back towards the cliff, jumped off, and it worked. Yahoo! I'm a flying man once again! I took some time flying around, feeling good that I was finally powered up. Just then, Jarvis delivered some interesting news. Sir, the superhero detector at the base is going off. The signals are off the charts. I hurried back to the base and went into the detector room. The machine was going crazy. The signal is way too strong for it to be Natasha and Blade getting their powers back. Mandarin must be up to something. It was time to take him down. On day 98, I headed off in the direction the detector was pointing. Not too much later, I saw a giant base rising out of the ground. This has to be Mandarin's base. Just then, I was attacked by a bunch of zombies. Oh no, he must be trying to do the same thing Iron Monger was. I've got to get to him, and quick. I was so strong that I knocked the zombies out of the way, no problem. But there was still a lot of them. I also couldn't help but notice some of them were stronger than others. I had to hurry and get to the top. Out of the way, zombros. I kept firing my repulsor cannon until at long last, all of the zombies were defeated. I ran over to the stairs and started heading up to the top. As I got close, I passed a sign in the distance. Oh, subscribe. You should do that right now. And once this adventure is over, go look up some more of my other ones. Just search Zozo, Z-O-Z-O, -O, to find them. On day 99, I reached the top of the tower and saw Mandarin floating in the sky. Wait, how are you floating? <laughs> Impressive, isn't it? You're too late. I've absorbed your friend's powers, and now you'll never be able to defeat me. No, I don't believe it. I'm going to knock their powers out of you. Bring it on, rich boy. Mandarin started firing energy blasts at me, causing some big explosions. I returned fire, launching attacks with my repulsor cannon. I had to be careful, though. Getting caught in those explosions really hurt. The time of the superheroes is over, and the time of the supervillain has begun. I managed to get a hit in with my repulsor, which stopped his monologue. But suddenly, a bunch of yellow smoke appeared, and Mandarin was gone. Where did he go? Looking for me? Mandarin reappeared, launching more energy blasts. He could teleport now. This wasn't looking good. I had started to fly around, but this was tough. I was hanging in there, but I didn't know how long I could last. What's wrong? Am I too strong? Let me make this easier for you and finish this. There was another plume of yellow smoke and Mandarin copied himself. I was getting attacked from all sides. Oh no, he's too strong. I was taking out some of his clones, but there was no way I could keep this up. I finally took out the clones, but took a heavy hit. One more hit 
and it was all done for me. I removed my mask. I'm going to enjoy this. You have been a thorn in my side for too long. Suddenly, a portal opened, and all of my friends came running through, including Doctor Strange and Captain America. Thought I ought to pay you back. This guy stole my face. That's America's face, not his. We were able to get our powers back. All thanks to you. Now let's return the favor. Well, 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 aren't we all just one big happy family? Well, you're too late. I'm not just as strong as all of you. I'm stronger. Mandarin cloned himself again, and we all started to fight. It was on now. He was still strong, but there was no way he could take us all down, because even though we might be equal in power, we had something he didn't. Friendship. No, it can't be. How can I be losing? We had defeated all of his clones and surrounded him in the center of the platform. Well, thanks for playing. Tell Ironmonger we say hello. No! I blasted him with my repulsor, destroying him for good. My friends and I all gathered together. Steve, I was wondering what had happened to you. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, the doctor here came and found me. By the time we met up with the other two, they had just gotten their powers. We came here right away. Just in time, too. Suddenly, another portal opened, and Hulk came through. Wait a second, this isn't where I was trying to go. Where's Abomination? Uh-oh, that Hulk sounds like me. Looks like me from another video somehow wound up here. Can you help him get back? After this video is over, go watch my Hulk video. On day 100, we had all arrived back at the base. The world was safe once again, and everyone had their powers. But we would stay vigilant and keep an eye out. You never know when trouble could strike again.